Hello everyone, it's been a while. I didn't mean it for it to, but it has. Um, so, just like, before I get into the stitching stuff, I want to just talk about stuff. Um, I really feel bad that this video is late. Um, I've really tried to commit to one video a month for this year. Um, and I had everything ready for June's video. And I had, like, all my piles of stuff ready and I was ready to do it. And then I realized I had lost the sand disc for my camera, and so I didn't have any memory to actually record onto or anything to record onto. So I had to wait until I ordered another one and for it to ship and arrive. And then I've been crazy busy with doctor's appointments and stuff. So I finally got around to making a video. But also I've had a really rough morning. So, um, but I was really committed to like trying to make this video. So I may be a little scatterbrained, and like my hair may be a mess. Um, but we're just going to go with it because otherwise this video may not get uh, recorded. So the first thing I want to show you guys is something I forgot to show in my last video. I had it out, I had it written down, and I was ready to talk about it, but then I just, just out of whatever reason, I forgot to. Um, so this is by someone on Etsy, and I don't remember their name, but I will enter the picture of what they look like, and I will have the name listed, and of course I always put the links down below. So here's this. Okay, and this is as far as I've gotten on it. I think it's super cool, and I really like it. Don't judge me for my funky gritting. Um, I really wanted to get a lot more done on this, but for some reason my black thread was being very difficult. Um, it's the same 310 that I use for everything. I have a cone of it, but for whatever reason, like I do five stitches on it, and then the thread would just shred. And then so I'd have to start a new thread, and it was just kind of a pain, and so that hasn't gotten much love, but it will eventually, as all things will. Um, yeah, and so the next thing that I'm going to talk about, I think I have permission to talk about. If not, oh no, but, um, in case you guys don't know, um, like, there's this thing called Twitch. Like, just twitch.tv or twitch.com. I just call it Twitch. But um, it's a streaming service where mostly it's for video games. Um, where people will live stream them playing video games and people watch. And I'm not here to discuss about whether or not watching someone play video games is entertaining or not or worth doing. That's not what I'm here to talk about. That's not, a con uh, that's not an argument or a conversation I want to have. What I want to talk about is that there is a huge creative community on Twitch as well, where people will stream them doing cross-stitch, diamond painting, painting in general, crochet, knitting, um, all, all of this different stuff, and it's just, it's really fun. Like, I know that, that there are quite a few of, like, Stitch With Me videos, or Paint With Me videos, or Diamond Paint With Me videos here on YouTube, but there is just something added to it being live. Um, like, you're able to message with the person who is doing stuff. You can ask them questions about what they're doing, about their techniques, about how their day is. It's just, it's, an, it's a whole different community, and it's very fun. And I just, I just, I highly recommend it when I'm not in the mood for watching floss tube videos, I will go and I will try to find a cross stitcher or something and talk to them and, and it is, it's just, it's so much fun. And um, I am on Twitch. I don't stream very regularly. I don't have a very set schedule. It's just, uh, I do mostly my diamond painting over there. When, um, when my arms and my hands get fatigued from stitching a lot, I will just diamond paint for a day and give my hands like a rest from the stitching motion and I normally feel better and so it's always just kind of like I'll stream on there when I can't stitch and I feel like I'm going to go insane if I don't have something creative to do. But I also consistently am trying to stream on Wednesdays because um, there's someone who I follow who is called the House of Zix and I'll link her down below and stuff. She's really awesome. She's really fun. I really like chatting with her and stuff like that. And so she started something with a few of her friends called like Witchy Stitchy Night. Where we all get together and we all live stream at the same time and we're talking to each other. But we are all working on 
witchy related projects. So like someone I think is doing an owl, um, some people are doing like black cats, um, some people are doing like just other kind of like fantasy things, but like it's just kind of like a dark fun stitching night. And I think you guys would, I think some of you guys would really like it. But what I started, I actually started something new because I wanted to join. And I had stuff that would probably fit, but I started Emmy. Emmy by Nora Corbett, the Bewi Bewitching Pixie. It's always hard to say. And I am planning on uh, switching up her colors and stuff. And I am planning on eventually stitching Cleo as well. But here is as far as I've gotten just from the few live stream sessions that I've done. So I have most of her started and I have my Kiki's Delivery Service Needle Minder. And then eventually uh, Cleo will go over here. This is 32 Count Enchanted Glen by Hand Dyed by Stephanie. And so it's just, it's really fun. I, I would really appreciate it if you guys could come and join us one night. It happens on Wednesdays over on Twitch. And I think it mostly starts around 7 p.m. Pacific time or like uh, West Coast time. And we go until sometimes 11, sometimes midnight, sometimes 1 o'clock in the morning, just depending on how tired we are. And some of us like leave earlier or later, but it's just, it's really fun. So yeah, I'm going to just stop rambling about that. Okay, I just kind of had, like my brain just stopped freezing. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is this, which I'm 99% sure I showed this to you guys last time. It's the mini max color possibilities of evolution, I think. Is that what it is? The mini, mini, the possibilities, evolution, rainbow max color by Walking Melons. It's Pokemon. It's all the different ev evolutions and evolutions. And so this is currently as far as I've gotten on it. Again, I can't really see it. Yeah, so that's as far as I've gotten on it. Um, I'm actually doing this for the 100 day hate challenge over on Facebook. Um, which if you guys don't know about, it's where you try to at least get one stitch on something every day. And it's just really nice to be able to consistently work on something. And there have been days I've only gotten 10 stitches done, only gotten one stitch done because I just wanted to commit and get that one stitch in. Uh, there have been nights where I've done over 100 stitches, but it is just nice to know, like, no matter what, I'm going to try to put one stitch on this a day. It, it is a really nice, like, motivation factor. So, so we will be seeing more of that. And, um, speaking of Hade, of Heaven and Earth Designs, I did sign up to go to the Heaven and Earth Con in August, and I haven't seen anyone really talking about it. Are any of you guys going? And I'll get to see you guys there because I'm I'm really really excited to go, but I just haven't seen anyone talk about it, and that's just kind of weird because everyone's talking about all the other retreats. But do you know anyone, or are you going to that? I would really like to know. Thank you. The next thing I'm going to talk about is that I have done some fabric dyeing, and I have a few other new starts. So the first one I'm going to show you. Um, I don't really know. I, I forget where I got the pattern from. I think I just found it online. But here is it is. It's purple flowers and sunflowers in my funky hoop. So this is as much as I've gotten done. And like I said, I dyed the fabric myself. I used aquamarine and denim writ dye. And then I just splashed it on here and this is what I got. Um, and this is, I've almost got the, this one sunflower done. I'll insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like now. So yeah, so here it is again. I'm working on this one for a friend. And if anyone was wondering, I don't know if I've shown this hoop before. Yeah, so that was a name. Yeah, so um, in case anyone's wondering, this is a hoop that I got from a friend. She gave it to me. Um, it was made locally. Um, by a store that no longer exists, so I really don't have much info on it, but it's really cool. I like working on it. It's a nice little lap stand. And I dyed some other stuff. 
So I'm going to show that to you guys now. I'm trying to make room. So I started something by Circus Stitches on Etsy. And they have a lot of really cool patterns. I think they have like over 100 patterns. And they have different like quotes and nerdy things. And just it's really cool stuff. I really check them out. I, I will link them down below. And so this is what I have started. And I plan on doing um, all four that comes in a set that I will show now. Yeah, so I think it's really cool. It's just this uh, Alice in Wonderland quotes as playing cards. And so I dyed these fabric for it. So I dyed this red fabric. And I dyed this... Uh, it was supposed to be black, but it turned out a little bit blue. And so I made two of the red and two of the blue. And if you see that there's only one blue here right now, it's because I started the curiouser and curiouser quote. And this is as much as I have done. So I have the and, and I started the O of the second curiouser. But I also dyed floss. So I don't know where I put it. they are. I did dye my own red floss using the same dye bath as the fabric that I used and I expected it to come out a lot more variegated but it kind of lost all of its variegation so I'm a bit disappointed about that because I planned on stitching um yeah so I planned on stitching with like a very variegated red on a plain blue background and then a plain floss on the more busy red fabric because it has slight modeling to it and stuff but that isn't how it worked out oh well and I'm really enjoying working on that it's very fun so there's that the next thing I want to talk about that I don't want to forget is this so um I don't believe I showed this to you guys last time. Again, I don't remember it and I didn't watch my video, but I don't think I showed this to you guys. Um, these are sprites of video game characters that are done by someone over on Reddit called... called... this? Um, and I don't, I don't really know how to say it, but I will post a picture right now of what they look like. Okay, and so here yeah, I've started this one, and that's as much as I've gotten done. And then, so yeah, so this is as much as I've gotten done of this character, who is my favorite character. And so I'm having to handpick the colors for that, so that's kind of a pain, which is why I'm starting with the black background. But yeah, another cut. Wonderful. Um, so this next thing I'm going to show you is something that I designed. I, I designed is kind of a loose term. I made this pattern myself out of a um, promotional image from How to Train Your Dragon 2 when it was coming out because I heard that the third one is coming out and I was really excited about that so I wanted to stitch something for it. And so I created this pattern which I will show now. Yeah, so I think that's super cool and I'm planning on stitching it on this also red fabric by Mad X Stitcher. It's called Poinsettia or Poinsettia. I'm not ever sure how to pronounce that correctly, but I think it's just a really pretty red fabric also that I plan on stitching that on. I don't know when, but that is a plan of mine and a pattern I made. If someone is interested in it, I'd be willing to share it, but as of right now I haven't tested it, so I don't know how good it is, so if you want, take it with a grain of salt. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is actually a finish. I'm so proud of this. Like, I'm crazy, super, stupid proud of this. But I showed this to you guys as a whip last time, I believe. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I must have. I must have shown this in my last video. 
but it is, yeah, because I remember rambling about time travel. It is based off of an anime called Steins Gate, and it's about this time traveler and all this stuff. So if you haven't watched the last video, I would recommend watching it because I'm not going to try to explain it again because it's really complicated and it's just... Ah. But anyways, here this is. Here's my finish. I'm trying to get the glare away. It's finished, you guys. So we'll zoom in on the stitches, but I can't see what you guys are seeing. So yeah, I'm I'm I am so proud of this. Um so I have the name of the show here, which is Steins Gate, and then I have this El Sai Kongru, which is just a catchphrase from the show. And then um gears are a big part of the show, like just kind of gears and hourglasses and clocks because it's about time travel. So I found these decorations at Hobby Lobby. Um, the gears came all together as one chain and then I broke the chain in half and then put them on the corners. I also found this little clock, clock face, and so yeah, I got those all, and I got the stickers. Um, these are stickers. I got all of the accessories from, from Hobby Lobby. I believe most of them were vintage or vintage, um, jewelry or whatever. Like, it's like vintage spelled with a J. I'm pretty sure that's where they, I got all those for. All except for this one here. This is actually something from the show. It was a pin, and I made it kind of into a needle minder. Um, I attached a magnet onto the frame itself, and then I it came as a pin back, and so I broke the pin off, and I put a magnet on it, and so it's just kind of like, I it goes and it stays on the frame, but if I want, I could still wear it, or use it as a needle minder, because I really liked it, and I wanted to be able to use it again if I wanted to, and not have it forced be on the frame. So that was kind of my idea, is that if I have a needle minder that is a decoration, I can also use it as other things. I don't know, I just, I hope that makes sense, and I hope that it's kind of cool. Like, I know most of you are not going to get this, but it makes me incredibly happy, and I'm just so proud of it. Um, and I had my dad do stuff, so again, I'm going to show you kind of a, a rough finish. Uh, no judging, please. But I took this really shiny foam board that I have and I used it as the backing and then I just used acid free tape to tape it down and then I attached hardware to it. Um, and originally it came with like a standing back but it didn't fit with the, um, with the cross stitch in it so I had to make my own back for it and it works just fine. So there's that and I'm just so happy about that and I remember Originally when I was supposed to record my July, no, my June video. In my June video, I was supposed to say, hey guys, I haven't finished this yet, but between the end of June and the f this first week of July, I was able to actually finish it. So I'm just, I keep saying I'm so excited, but you guys don't know, like, I don't get finishes very often, which is why I only have two on the wall. And this one was just, it's so me. Like, it's just, it's something very specific to me, and I'm just so proud of it, and I designed it all myself, more or less. Like, I didn't design the pattern. Um, I said in my last video, um, the actual pattern for this is by Cross uh, Stitch Quest. Um, it's a Patreon-only pattern, which is where if you pledge $1 a month to them, you can download all their patterns, and they release new patterns constantly, and it's really, it's a really great deal, deal. And they also have a blog where they have tons of nerdy and fun and fandom free patterns. Um, I'll look. I'll link their Patreon and um, blog down below again. But as for the design of the frame and all of the decorations, that was all me, and I'm just so proud of it. And also, um, quick story time about this. I'm I'm going to talk about this for like ten minutes. I'm very sorry, but uh, so this is a frame I got off online. It was originally brown, or stained brown, and I uh, spray painted it black. Um, it's three and a half inches by ten inches, I believe. And I just want to say, I'm a little disappointed in Hobby Lobby. Um, I'm always a little disappointed in Hobby Lobby. But, 
um, the, I, I went and I custom ordered a frame. Okay, yeah, so story time. I went and I custom ordered a frame for this piece because I know that it's a funky shape. It's like the design itself stitched up on 18 count, I think I did, is like three and a quarter inches by nine and a quarter inches. And I know that isn't gonna fit any frame that you find in a store. And so I went and I custom ordered a frame in the middle of May and I asked them to make it for me and they said, okay, yeah, cool. They took the measurements and they said, okay, we'll call you when it's done. I'll be ready in like a week or two. And so I waited like a week or two and then I called them and they said, oh yeah, no, it's not ready yet. Um, we'll, call, we'll call you when it's ready. And I'm a bit of a worrier and so I called like, I called the day that they said it was going to be ready, and they said, oh no, it's not ready, um, we'll call you when it's ready, and then so I called back two days, like, two or three days later, and I said, hey, is it ready yet, and they said no, and so I said, okay, and so I waited again, so I, I called, like, two or three times asking them if my frame was ready, and they kept saying, no, it's not ready yet, we'll call you when it's ready, and so I took their word for it after, like, the third time, and I waited and then a whole month went by. So it, it was like May 15th that I ordered the frame or that it was supposed to be ready. And I called on like June 15th. And the woman said like, oh no, it's not ready yet. It's supposed to be ready like the 18th or whatever. And I said, yeah, um, no. Or like, I didn't say yeah, no. I said, um, are you sure about that? Because it was supposed to be May 18th, not June 18th. And she, like, and so, uh, on the, over the phone, she's like, um, yeah, like, let me see that again. And so she didn't know what was going on. And so she called me back, um, like, a few hours later. And they never ordered my frame. They kept saying, oh, yeah, it'll be ready, we'll call you. But they never even ordered There was a problem with it. Um, according to them, the frame was too small. They wouldn't make me a frame that was like three and a half inches by nine and a half inches. Or they weren't sure if the glass was supposed to be three and a half inches and by nine and a half inches or just the outside of the frame. They didn't know. They didn't know. They something went there was miscommunication, but they never called me to check. They never did anything like that. So um the first time that they called me back, they said that they were unsure about their about the measurements and I'd have to come down and they wanted to remeasure my piece. But I don't understand why they didn't call me and they told me that they were gonna that it was okay and then they didn't call me to tell me that there was a problem. And then when I called again, they said that um actually they called me back again and they said actually um we can't make you a frame that small. They refused to make me a frame that was that small. They they said that they'd have to I'd have to come back down and we order a larger frame and I didn't want to reorder a larger frame and I'm a bit of a skeptical person so I was wondering if and I was irritated and I was skeptical at this point like over a month later with no communication on their part until me calling about it and I was thinking that maybe they just kind of wanted more money like because the bigger the bigger the frame the bigger the glass all that stuff that adds up like you they charge you for the size of the of the of the frame so if they want me to order a bigger frame that to me that's like them just asking for more money and like they said oh we can like make you a window that small but you need a mat like I don't need a mat I don't want a mat I want a frame that's tiny to fit my tiny cross stitch so I'm just a little irked by that whole experience and so I to cancel the order and I went online and I found this frame for like 12 or 13 bucks which was you know over half as expensive because for my original like eight and three inches by or no like three and a half inches by nine and a half inches they were charging me thirty dollars and so I was able to find this one that was ten by three and a half for twelve so that's just my little story time about Hobby Lobby moving on though um, I made some needle minders, I've been to a few thrift stores, uh, and I've ordered, or I did buy some other stuff at Hobby Lobby. So, I think I'm going to start with, um, my thrift store finds. So the first thing is 
this, which is actually also a needle minder. I found this little necklace that had this peacock on it. And so I bought that and I made a needle minder out of it. Um, and then another thing that I found, it's going to be making noise. It was for $4, I got this little sewing kit that has all this thread and bobbins and scissors and all this stuff. And it's not a complete kit, like whatever this stuff was is missing. But I got all this for $4, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, so those are my two thrift store finds, which is kind of sad because I went to like five different thrift stores and that was all I found. But, you know, not every not every time you go to a thrift store do you get a score. That's just kind of the thrill of the hunt, right? Or the thrill of the thrift. And so the next thing I want to show you guys is... Um, my needle minders, like I said. So, um, I already showed you the one in my Steinsgate piece. The other ones that I made are this one. This was another pin that I bought. It's a Pokemon. It's called Mimikyu. And I'm planning on putting it on my Eevee project. So, I filed the, the pin back down and I put a, a magnet on it. This next one is from my favorite movie or one of my favorite movies, which is Treasure Planet. So here's this pin. So I really like him on a solar surfer. And so this isn't an actual Disney pin. This is like, um, I think it's called like a Disneyana pin or like they're pins that are commissioned of Disney characters, but they're not official Disney pins. But to some collectors, they're worthless. To others, they are still valuable and they can still be kind of expensive. Um, but you just can't like trade them at like they don't have actually like, Disney value, but like Disney fans still have value to them. If that makes any sense, it probably doesn't. But yeah, so I got this one, and I really like this one because it is a very nice pin of this scene that I really really like, but it's not crazy amounts of money because there aren't a lot of Treasure Planet um, pins and the ones that do exist are all hundreds of dollars whereas I got this one for just like a few bucks because it's not an official pin but it's still pretty and if I dare say prettier than the actual pins that exist. And this last one I want to show you guys. I have to find the card for it. There it is. So here's what the pin came on. It's a little like Ouija board planchette, I think I've heard you guys say. I don't touch, I hate story time. I like things that are kind of dark and creepy, um, but I don't mess with spirits. I, I just don't, I don't ever plan on, on playing with a Ouija board or touching one or anything like that. I just, not for me. But the card came on a little planchette thing. If you guys can read that, I'll, if you guys can't read that, it's, um, Made with magic from weirdos to weirdos is the catchphrase, and it's Killstar is the brand name. And so I looked them up, and they have quite a few other, like, pins that are just really cool and macabre. Um, there's, like, there's bat ones, there's witch ones, there's, uh, all these different ones. But here's the one that I bought. It's a Death Heads Hawk Moth with kind of an artistic flair has like a little moon on its skull and it's the lower part of its body is like a crystal. Let me see if I can show that to you guys. I'm trying to... Yeah, so this one, I've been looking for a death head moth, a uh, hawk moth pin. And I found this one and it was just perfect so I bought it. But yeah, there is like other moth ones and other witchy things and I would just really check them out if you guys are into it. But um, mine was pretty tiny so I had to grind it down and put a mini magnet on it. So yeah, so that's it for the needle, needle minders and stuff. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is stuff I bought at Hobby Lobby, which, um, oh, not quite, not quite the last thing I'm going to show you. If you guys remember on my giant cross stitch, my giant hay, this one here, my monster of a project that 
is super long. I made uh, these grime guards, or like the scroll rod covers, out of like that sparkly purple galaxy fabric that I had. I went to Joanne and I got some more fabric. So here's this one. It's also purple spacey like. And then I got this one, which is Pokeballs. And so I plan on making this one into uh, scroll rod covers for my Eevee. And I'm just going to save this one for someday when I want to use it. And now the last thing I want to show you guys is I'm sure some of you guys have heard that um, Hobby Lobby did clearance a lot of their frames and stuff. So I'm just going to show you, like, um, I know that some people have, like, once they finish something, they store it in, like, a drawer for a really long time. That's not really my style. Uh, once I finish something, like, I, I start a lot of things. I have way too many starts. Um, and I don't finish things very often. I've finished four things maybe in the four years I've been doing stuff uh, of, of doing cross stitch but to me I like knowing that once it is finished I'm able to FFO it really quickly so I like having once I start a project or I get close to finishing a project or even before I start a project I like to have the frame already um, I like framing my pieces and I like knowing that they will be perfect if that makes any sense. So I don't just let mine, they sit around in drawers while they're, while they're whips, but once they're finished, I like to get them fully finished. Um, so I bought a bunch of the clearance frames that they had. Okay, um, first things first. This one is not Hobby Lobby frame. This one is a Walmart frame. It's by Mainstay, I believe but it's very pretty and kind of ornate. Okay, first things first. Um, this is not a Hobby Lobby frame, this is a Walmart frame. Okay, first things first. This is not a Hobby Lobby, this is a Walmart frame. It's very pretty and ornate. I can zoom in and somehow show you guys the edges of it and so this one this frame I have planned for this one eventually when I finish it okay this next one is a really cool frame I've always wanted like one of these frames where it's um, the two pieces of glass that like suspend off the wall um, yeah so it's just it's two pieces of like puxy glass that you can put your image in between and so I think a cross stitch on this would be super cool. And so um, I have a plan for this one, but may or may not happen. Will not happen for a very long time, but I have it now. I don't remember how much I bought that one for. For this next frame, um, I think I'm going to put the mini evolutions in. This one was for $7.50. And I'm planning on painting it. I like the kind of like funky shaped frames. I really like these. And this last one is another funky shaped one. Goes like this. I'm gonna frame it like this. Probably gonna paint it. This one is also 750 but doesn't have glass or anything. It's just kind of weird on the back. But this one I plan on doing for the vampire woman, which is the first one that, not vampire, but the bat woman, the first thing that I showed in this video. And that will look pretty. Just kind of like with the pointiness of her hat. Like that. Okay. I think that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Oh, except for one more thing. I have stolen an idea from someone who stole an idea from someone for, organize, for organizing. Um, I have a closet over to the side there, and my biggest problem is that, like, I have lots of whips, but I don't know how to store them when I'm not working on them, because I'll leave them, don't tell anyone, but I leave them on the scroll, f on, the, on the cue snaps, and on the scroll frames, and all that stuff, but I didn't really have a way of organizing them, because I didn't want to, like, lean them against anything, because if something touches them, uh, like, I'm sure you guys know that if something is really like drum tight and then something's pressed against it, 
it can warp the fabric and it can like be permanently stuck that way. And so I haven't really found like a perfect shelf or anything that would work. But I saw this idea from someone else who saw it from someone else where you hang your projects in a closet. So let me go grab one. Okay, I lied. I grabbed two. So I don't really like the way I did this one, but um, this is what I first did. So this is Electra. Again, ooh, look at her. She's almost done. Not until October. But um, you take a hanger and then you take, uh, what are these called? Zip ties and you hang your cross stitch project on it. And then so your part can just hang in your closet without taking up much space and like they'll be separated so like nothing will touch them or warp them. But yeah, so this is my first idea. But this isn't how I plan on doing it. I'm planning on changing this one. So what I actually do, like with this one that I need to work on more, um, I use these clamps that my dad had and that you can find places and like you don't have to use specifically this type but um, I clamp my projects on so they're clamped on to the hanger um, and then they just hang but what I would recommend most is a hybrid of these two ideas um, what I kind of liked is the idea of putting zip ties on the, on the, on the hanger and then putting the clamps onto the zip ties and then the clamps onto the piece so that way um, you can just take your project off easily by just releasing the clamps and then you can put them back on by putting them on the clamps whereas oh I'm making noise but like with this one if I want to work on Electra again I have to cut the zip ties so I go through a lot of zip ties every time I want to start and, and stop this and put it away but that's just that's just an idea it's just Currently, what I like and how I've organized all my products, so I'll put a picture of what my closet currently looks like here. So yeah, that is everything I think I have to show you guys this time, as far as I am aware. Thank you so much for watching me, even though I am a rambling mess, and I'm really out of it, and I'm really tired, but I really enjoy making these videos for you guys and sharing them and watching all you guys' videos. So, just thank you so much for sticking around with me. I will see you guys next month. Hopefully, hopefully I'll see some of you guys at Heaven and Earth Con. Until next time, you guys. Bye-bye.